Excellent. So now I can start. So fingerprints, lasers, secrets. I had to call Herb and say, Herb, my friend, please, can you offer some advice? Because I'm agonizing over the description of the relationship between fingerprints, laser, and secrets here, and how to describe the complexity of the analytical science behind it. And so Herb said, do you know, here I think in digital we're like a, like a family, so it would be nice for the audience to know a bit more about yourself, which didn't really answer the question, but um, I kind of felt relieved because by that answer, I thought it was easier to squeeze in a few minutes 10 years of pioneering research than actually explain to you how I got from shoveling sand three months a year in Italy at the seaside to being a fingerprint lover and fighting crime using lasers. But what I can tell you is this, that if mixing a little bit of Italianness, which is what my head of department interestingly says, you never know whether she's paying you a compliment or not, but most likely not, and then uh, mixing a little bit of curiosity, a lot of passion, an early developed sense of justice, and a, like a sprinkle of fastness, maybe a ton of fastness. Um, and then, you know, this thirst for knowledge and understanding, this amazing technology using lasers in a thriving research environment, which is what I found in the UK. The cost and engagement with the beneficiaries of my research, so law enforcement agencies at all, at all levels, and then constant and very strong interdisciplinary efforts, that made the recipe for an explosive success, um, by, by which we were able to disclose an entirely new world of information in something tiny and invisible like fingerprints. But before I take you on this journey, I'd like you to answer a question. So whenever do you think I must be really careful not to touch anything? So these are your options. I'll give you about 20 seconds to vote. Don't be shy. And Richard from the technical team will stop the uh, poll when the 20 seconds are over. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. So I could. Is that over? Nope. Right, can we stop the poll now then? Ooh, wow, well, that's just interesting. So I kind of understand people saying right before sitting on this chair, because probably knew what I was talking about, I was definitely expecting the never answer. I do want to have a word with people saying always. <laughs> yeah? Why is that? But actually, interestingly, if I, got, if I were to ask this question to offenders, I would expect them to answer always. But this is clearly not the case, because the, despite the advent of DNA and the forever broadcasting uh, CSI New York, CSI Miami, and CIS, Actually, the two-thirds of suspect identifications are still being made through fingerprinting. So clearly, very, very important process. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So if I were to ask you, what's a fingerprint? I'm sure that with different words, we'll come up with the same definition. It would say, is a unique pattern of lines. Actually, the minutia here, so these local characteristics, their range and their diversity, they what? make our fingerprints all different. And since 1881, which is where Sir Henry Ford realized the power of fingerprints, up to now, not two fingerprints have been found alike. But Houston, we have a problem in cases like this. So when fingerprints are overlapped or smudged, very faint, or we call them empty, like we know that there is a fingerprint, but we can't see any detail, then the process of matching a crime scene mark to a fingerprint record in a national database obviously fails. So this is where we have to go back to drawing board and actually exploit the knowledge that is there, has always been there. Are we sure that really this, this is what really a fingerprint is, a unique pattern of lines? Or is it just this? Well, watch this video. 
I believe we need to rethink this definition. This is a close-up of a fingertip. And I think that a fingerprint is actually the sexier version of sweat, <laughs> right? And sweat is a biological matrix, so it contains a lot of molecules. So in fact, when we then contact our fingertip with the surface, we are transferring molecules. Ah, are you starting to get a bit scared now? You should be. So when then a solid state laser in UV laser fires on a fingerprint, we disorb these molecules. They are captured by a mass spectrometer, who, as the word says, actually measure the weight or the mass of the molecule. It's like a mini scales for molecules. And why are we interested in the mass? Because if I know the mass, I actually know what the molecule is. So it's kind of an identity card, or like a passport for a molecule. And so molecules become storytellers <laughs> of who we are. Why? Because we, can, we could trust for molecules that come from within our body, and then we actually sweat out. So they could possibly tell us about our physiological state, but also molecules that come from contamination because we touch lots of different stuff. And then maybe they could tell us what we've been doing. But also molecules that we introduce in our body, uh, for example, through food, drinks, drugs, medications, and then again we sweat out, maybe in a different form. So they could give us information about lifestyle, possibly pathological states, possibly pharmacological states. So having said all that, do you think it's really impossible to do this? A new type of criminal profiling, what I call a chemical criminal profiling, when we gather intelligence about the person that has left the mark, not because of reconstruction through behavioral um, science, but because of what those molecules tell us. Some of this stuff is in progress, but some of it is already in the bag. Also, this technology allows you not just to detect the molecules, but to see them. How, the distribution of those molecules in a fingerprint. So let me show you with an example what the power of this technology is. These are clearly overlapped finger marks. Have a guess. How many finger, mar how many finger marks do you think there are? These are your options. These perfectly reasonable. But to you, the choice. Can we start the poll, please? Can we show the results of the poll? Right, okay, so majority, well, it's still going, majority goes for five. There's a good percentage of four, more than five. Can we stop the poll so then I can show you the results? So actually, this is what happens when we apply this laser technology. These are the marks. Are you ready? There are six marks. Now, those that have answered six, they're hired, obviously, fingerprint experts. The point, though, wasn't exactly to guess how many fingerprints there were. The point was the ability to separate the patterns. And the reason why we've been able to do that is not by the power of magic, is because with our analysis, we collect thousands of molecules in one fingerprint. So chances are there will be at least one molecule that is different and unique and only found in one fingerprint and not in others. So I can separately ask the software, just tell me where this molecule is distributed. And I can separately visualize the different fingerprints, which is so important, for example, when it comes to separate victims versus assailant overlapped fingerprints, so that I can separately admit that to the database for uh, matching. But this is physical, powerful information, but it still comes from molecules. So let's focus on molecules a little bit more now. This is the first significant example that the technology could be used in the real world. We uh, received some fingerprints from patients in a drug rehabilitation clinic after a lot of swearing and insults because we were helping the police. 
what you don't do for science. Anyway, so we got those fingerprints and um, obviously we were hoping to find methadone because that, you know, that's what they would be taking in the initial stages of the therapy. We applied the sophistication of the technology and we definitely, most definitely found methadone, which we were very proud of. What we didn't expect to find, but we found, was traces in that same fingerprint, traces of consumption of cannabis and of cocaine. And that told us two things. The first was that, again, the technology actually works in the outside world. Even in an untargeted manner, we could find things that we weren't searching for. And the second information was that, obviously, this person must have had a hell of a party <laughs> a few hours before. <laughs> she wasn't supposed to, really. Or what else? Right, when you think about blood in violent crimes, you always think probably of pools of blood, loads of blood. But there are a lot of invisible traces, and the police has got means techniques to visualize that blood trace. However, all of the techniques that they use can give rise to false positives, which means depending on the technique that you're using, stuff like egg yolk, leather, horseradish, bleach, biofluids like semen, saliva, actually would test positive from blood. And we need a technology that is a lot more specific than that. And what we can do with this laser technology is actually visualizing the blood-specific proteins, so detecting them and visualizing them on the rich detail. Again, this is important because we establish a link between the biometric information, which is the actual fingerprint rich pattern leading to an identity, with the circumstances of the crime, the events of the bloodshed, and we can also reconstruct the dynamics of the crime itself. So very important. It also works for prints that have been um, previously visualized by CSIs, because in all honesty, that's how we received the prints. So they'll do their work first, and then they'll come to us if they need to. And in some cases, our, our technology works even better, because here, this is a C CSI technology. This is our technology. Here you see nothing. Here you see the blood mark with a very specific molecule here. And he also works for very old marks. This is an example of a mark which is 37 year old on fabric, which was announced at the time by the CSI, and we definitely saw blood there. So we could contribute to reopening of cold cases. I told you that we work a lot with the beneficiaries of our research. The police, West Yorkshire Police has been a massive partner. The Home Office, very engaged from the beginning. This is their statement. So uh, the next step change in fingerprinting technology uh, means to build a picture of an offender's prior movements. And obviously, we did not want to disappoint. The next slide I'm going to show you is an extra of some police casework that we did. This is a, a harassment crime scene mark. This is what arrived to our laboratory. So this was taken from the interior side of a window frame, and the mark is very poor. So they asked us, is there any, any way in which you can provide rich detail that is better than this? I was not very optimistic, because one thing the technology or nothing can do is, no technology can do, is create rich detail if it's not there. If the mark is originally smudged, it's smudged. There's nothing that we can do about it. So when we applied our technology, that's what we got, not much better. So we couldn't offer that physical information. However, remember that those images come, come out from actual molecules. And what we found out is that we actually had seen cocaine, which you, know, you might say, oh, right, OK, well, that's interesting. But at that point, we were like, cocaine, again. <laughs> <laughs> See cocaine everywhere. So can we possibly say something else? So had this person just touched cocaine? Had the person taken cocaine? And we can tell this because if we are able to visualize the molecules that are the result of the transformation of anything that you've ingested, and then they are sweated out like metabolites, then we can tell the difference. We applied our technology and we saw a lot of metabolites. There was no doubt that this person was under the influence. 
And months down the line, the police finally talked to us and said, oh yeah, we tested the, the suspect, we apprehended it. And um, yes, he tested positive for cocaine. So thanks very much for telling us in advance. But actually, we found something that the police was not able to find. And that's the, that's the power of the technology. The police had asked the individual, we didn't know this at the time, did you also drink? Did you abuse alcohol? And the suspect said, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Well, we found a molecule, a metabolite, that actually is also eliminated in sweat. And this metabolite is called cocathelin. Cocathelin forms in your body only if you consume cocaine and you drink alcohol. The police had no means to verify this. We did. And the suspect actually uh, confirmed this, confessed this, just before the court hearing. So this is after 20, 20 days later we received the mark. So this tells us that the technology is operationally implementable because it, this was a real police case work. And it can inform us on the state of mind of the individual whilst committing the crime. Because alcohol potentiates the effects of cocaine. So the prosecution or the defense could have used this information to argue their case. Last example. This is a sad case of a 16-year-old girl who disappeared and then was found six months later in a pond, murdered. And this was the tape, masking tape, that was found wrapped around her neck. It was recovered by the police and the police told us there's clearly a fingerprint there which with all the goodwill in the world, I just couldn't really see. Trust me, it's there, it's there. But obviously, there's nothing that we can use to make an identification. Can you help us? Again, I wasn't too optimistic because six months in the water, exposed to all sorts of environmental conditions, it was I felt it was a bit unlikely to find something. I was wrong this time because that's what we found. Which detail there? which they can use now to make comparison with the fingerprints of the suspects that they have on their list. Again, this is not by the power of magic. The reason why I was able to gather this image is because there are molecules that persist and they don't degrade according to the conditions they're exposed to. This particular molecule doesn't care whether water was there or not because it's not hydrosoluble. So it stayed there and I could gather the image of distribution of that molecule on the ridges. This is the power of this laser technology. This is the power of fingerprints and the molecules contained within. And remember, your secrets in just a touch. Thank you.